The final organic molecule that we'll discuss in this unit is adenosine triphosphate, more commonly known as ATP. ATP is the universal form of chemical energy used by cells to carry out energy-demanding cellular activities, such as protein or hormone synthesis, active transport of chemicals across cell membranes, movement of cells and cellular structures like cilia, and muscle contraction. One way to understand the function of ATP inside a cell is to think of it as a type of energy currency or money. When a cell needs work to be completed, it must spend ATP, just like we need to pay others, like plumbers or electricians, with money for services they perform. ATP is technically classified as a nucleotide, and like other nucleotides, has a three-part structure. It consists of a molecule of the nitrogenous base adenine bound to the sugar ribose, which together are called adenosine, attached to three phosphate groups. The term triphosphate comes from ATP's three phosphate groups. The phosphate groups each carry a negative charge and are attached to each other by two phosphate bonds, a type of covalent bond shown in red in the diagram. The phosphate groups, because they all have negative charges, repel each other, making ATP a fairly unstable molecule. These phosphate bonds are important because they're used to transfer energy that powers the various endergonic reactions that take place in the cell. Remember that endergonic reactions require an overall input of chemical energy in order to occur. To transfer energy from ATP, the terminal or last phosphate group is removed through a spontaneous hydrolysis reaction. This involves the addition of a water molecule and an initial investment of energy. However, after the reaction runs through completion, there is actually a net release of free energy that can be used by the cell to fuel energy-demanding processes. The hydrolysis reaction is ATP plus water yields with the enzyme ATPase that catalyzes this reaction ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, plus inorganic phosphate, plus a net release of free energy. Once ATP is hydrolyzed, the resulting product, ADP, is a more stable molecule because it contains two phosphate groups and less energy. The prefix di means two. The free phosphate group released from this reaction can now be attached to another reactant or enzyme or be used to synthesize new ATP molecules. Here's an analogy to help you understand how ATP is used in cells. ATP hydrolysis is similar to making an investment in a good stock. You may have heard of the phrase, you have to spend money to make money. You have to invest some money initially into the stock but if the stock does well, you end up with a higher return on your investment. The cell has to make an initial investment of energy in order to hydrolyze ATP. But more energy is actually released when the new bonds form in the products. So overall, the cell is rewarded with an energy profit through a net release of energy in ATP hydrolysis. ATP can also be regenerated through a dehydration synthesis reaction involving a net input of energy. This energy comes mostly from the breakdown of foods like glucose via cellular respiration. The ATP synthesis reaction is basically the reverse of ATP hydrolysis. In this reaction, catalyzed by the enzyme ATP synthase, ADP combines with a free phosphate group and a net input of energy. This yields one molecule of ATP and one water molecule as products. Think of the overall hydrolysis and synthesis 
of ATP as a cycle, like a continuous renewable energy cycle, where usable energy is consumed through the foods we eat and produced through ATP synthesis inside a living cell. The hydrolysis of ATP makes the energy available for use inside the cell. 